Margaret Strout, and today we're going to be cooking for your health. We're going to be using as many WIC foods as possible. We're going to make some alternative breakfast foods. Now, I know, cereal, grits, eggs, bacon sausage, pancakes, waffles, things like that are pretty normal fare. I'm going to do today some uh, quick breads, a, a cereal bar, which is really yummy, and something that's a little fancier, and I'm going to talk to you about that in a bit. Let's begin with zucchini bread. Now, oopsie, I have my bowl, and zucchini bread, this is a fairly large recipe. It makes a good two, two loaves or a bunch of muffins, so you want to have a fairly large bowl. And I've also forgotten my recipe. Okay, you are going to beat four eggs. Now, I've already cracked my eggs, and I'm putting them in there. You can use a fork. I like these little spring things. And you don't need to beat them to the point that they're, you know, frothy or anything like that. You're going to add one cup of sugar, one third cup oil, Some vanilla, and anyone who's watched me cook before knows I don't measure, so I'm just going to add that in there. I like things flavorful. You're going to whip this up. Now, this does have sugar in it. The oil is a healthy oil. You can use healthy oils. Now, I'm going to recommend don't use any kind of uh, whisk or anything like that after you add the zucchini because you have to pick it out and it's not a lot of fun. So I'm going to go to my spatula. Now, these are zucchini. Normally, I get the really big zucchini that people have let go, they've forgotten about or they've missed them. These are smaller. These actually are more flavorful, so you will have more of a zucchini flavor. Zucchini is high in potassium, as well as vitamin A. They have a good bit of fiber, and they don't have a lot of calories. If you make this bread, you can do carrots, you can do grated apple, you can do anything, because the zucchini is just adding some fiber and some moisture to it. Now, this is about two cups of zucchini that's been grated. It doesn't matter if you have some of the bigger pieces. They're going to cook down. They're going to make it a little more colorful. Now, some people, when they make zucchini bread, they make it, I don't know, with white flour. They don't put a lot of herbs and spices in it. I do spices, but you could do a variety. Now, I've got flour. This is three and a half, half cups of whole wheat flour. I like whole wheat flour because it's got more fiber, it's got more nutrients, it's better for you. You can use white flour. I am not a big fan of white flour. I like the texture of whole wheat flour as well. I put my half a teaspoon of salt in this. Now. I'm going to add some cinnamon, ginger, and a little bit of cloves. You don't want to go too crazy with cloves. They tend to have a, um, a bitter flavor. I'm going to mix this up a bit. Now, I have one cup of nuts that I've ground, and there are a number of ways you can grind them, chop them. You can use one of those up down things, you can use a knife, you can put them in a plastic bag, roll them with a, a rolling pin, or um, you can let your kids have a, a plastic bag and let them either beat them with a rolling pin or a hammer or something like that. That may be something the kids would like to do. I think you wouldn't have a lot of stress if you did. It's kind of fun. Okay, I'm going to talk about Again, I don't measure a whole lot, and those of you who have seen me cook know I don't. But baking soda and baking powder is the one thing that I really, really measure. Because if you get too much in, 
it is yucky. So I'm gonna put one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. I have put this through a strainer so it doesn't have any lumps. Because again, you don't want to have lumps because otherwise you get this of stuff and it's just, ugh. okay. And then I'm gonna put three quarters. And again, I'm really exact with my measures. I don't want to have too much. And if it gets clumpy, I take it out and I put it through a sieve or something like that so that it is not clumpy. Now, you notice I put my raisins and nuts in the flour. You do this so that your nuts and raisins don't end up at the bottom. They get coated with the flour and it keeps them up in the mixture. I think that's good and mixed. Well, you want to kind of make sure the raisins are separated. I mean, it's kind of fun to get two raisins together, but it kind of allows you to. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this in here. Now, one trick, and it doesn't happen a lot with this quick bread. Any time you have a quick bread, you want to make sure that you do not mix it too much. Because if you do, you're going to get what they call tunnels. And that is because the flour has a lot of gluten um, in it, and it, it makes the muffins tough. They don't ri raise right, etc. So you're going to mix them the least amount possible, but you want to get the moisture. Ooh. When you use frozen zucchini, a lot of the moisture has come out, so it's a little easier to mix. Now. I'm going to run and get, let's see if I've got this the flour in there good. And you notice I'm not, I'm just kind of folding this in, I'm doing that. I'm going to show you how I do muffins. Let me go get my muffin tins. Oh well. Now. I was complaining to my sister one day, and I said, you know, my muffins don't come out of my muffin pans. And she said, well, you know, they have liners for that. <laughs> so um, I have sprayed the liners with a little bit of pan coat. I like using one of these because this way you can kind of control. You can use a spoon and a knife or two spoons if you want to, but I'm kind of lazy. And you can use an ice cream scoop, or you can use this for an ice cream scoop, or you can use this for cookies. Now, while I do this, I'm going to let us take a little bit of a break, and we'll be back. I will put these in the oven, and then I think we're going to work on some cereal bars, which are really good. And again, these are things to carry. The muffins are wonderful for little kids. They're a portion control. You know, I loved muffins when I was little, and you can carry them easily. Have this in a glass of milk, and you're good to go. And it's better than, you know, biscuits and sausage and all that other stuff. Okay, so we'll be right back in a bit. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Visit your local tailgate market and fall in love with the freshest, best-tasting food around. 
Find your farmer at mountainmarkets.com. Welcome back. Now for breakfast bars. These will be an alternative to granola bars, essentially. Now, last time I didn't mention wick foods. Oatmeal is a wick food. So I got, and I, I get the old fashioned because I like it to have more texture. I think that makes, that's part of what makes granola bars so good. And essentially you're making a granola bar. One cup of flour. Again, I'm using whole wheat flour. Uh, half a cup of brown sugar. Now I want to tell you a secret. If you perchance run out of brown sugar, you can put a little bit of molasses and regular sugar, and it more or less makes the same thing. The flavor is about the same thing. Half a cup of raisins. If you wanted to add nuts to this, I'm sure it would be wonderful. A little bit of ground nuts. Half a cup of wheat germ. I don't have these recipes memorized. A little bit of salt and a little bit of cinnamon. I added just a tad of ginger and a little bit of clove because I like things a little bit spicier. I'm sure, you know, just thinking, you could add a little bit of peanuts, something like that if you wanted to. I'm just following the recipe more or less. I kind of modified this recipe. I'm not very good at following recipes, so I'd kind of take everything and change it around. The zucchini bread recipe is one that we got in the 70s when one year we had so many zucchini and everybody had these huge zucchini. We had to do something with them. Now you're going to add half a cup of oil. You can use a really, really healthy oil if you want to get fancy. You could use a flavored oil. I didn't. I just used regular, I think, canola oil. One egg. And again, that's a wick food. Some vanilla. And half a cup of honey. Now, if you don't want to add honey, I'm probably the only person I know who's not a huge fan of honey. You can add a little bit more sugar and maybe another egg. You want to have the moisture so you can bind. The difference between these and regular granola bars are, first off, they're going to be less expensive. You can control the amount of sugar you want. If you have any food allergies, you can control the ingredients so that they don't have any of the foods that you are allergic to. Plus, I think it's kind of fun for kids. They can help with this. It's something they can mix with their hands. Now, we're going to put them in a 9 by 13 pan. I have sprayed this. Now, I'm going to show you, whoops, a bit of a trick here. This is your best spatula. I am going to go dampen my hands with a little bit of cold water because if you're trying to put, mash these down and spread them out, if you don't have a little bit of water, <laughs> everything's going to stick to your hands and it won't do as, as it won't be as easy. Now I've just rinsed my hands. I have a little bit of water on them. And this makes it a lot easier. The other thing you could do if you wanted to, you could make these bacon by using an alternative or a substitute for egg. Okay, you can see these bars and, the, whoops, <laughs> they're sliding. Um, Again, if you wanted to sprinkle some nuts, uh, you could drizzle them with something if you really want to, but that might make them a little bit higher in, in sugar and fat. I'm going to put these in the oven. They're going to bake 
for about 30 minutes and it's an oven that's a 30, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll take a break and we'll be back in just a bit and I do believe we're gonna make some pumpkin bread. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. Now we're going to make a recipe that I grew up with. It's Mrs. Colgan's pumpkin bread. I can't remember who Mrs. Colgan is, but she was a friend of my mother's. We are gonna take one and a half cups of sugar, you can cut this down if you want to, but sometimes a little bit of sweet's good. A quarter cup of oil, and again, I'm using, oh golly, I think canola oil in this. Two eggs. Eggs are wick food. A third of a cup of water. I measured that in the same container I measured the pumpkin. So it had a little bit of stuff in it. One cup of dry pack pumpkin. This is just canned pumpkin. If you use, if you want to make your own pumpkin, you want to use the, oh, I believe they're sugar crisp or candy crisp pumpkins, the little itty bitty ones. If you want to use your old jack-o'-lanterns, you want to drain a lot of the moisture out because the um, jack-o'-lanterns will, uh, they're much more, they have much more water. I'm gonna put that in there. And pumpkin, I love pumpkin. It is high in vitamin A, it's high in fiber, um, and it's just plain good. And again, this, like the zucchini bread, the pumpkin is adding the moisture and some flavor. And I remember when I was a little kid, we would get this every once in a while, and we were so thrilled with it. So I'm going to put that aside. Now I've got one and three quarters cup of flour. Sorry, I lost my measure. A little bit of baking powder and baking soda. I showed you how to measure it. This again is the one thing I'm pretty exact about measuring. Some cinnamon. It calls for cinnamon, allspice, um, ginger, or, and clove, but I add a little ginger. I don't care for allspice, so I don't put it in. You can do whatever combination you like. And then I've got half a cup of chopped nuts. And, oh, come out of there. Half a cup of raisins. Now raisins and nuts are not a wick food, but they still have a lot of good things in them. They've got the healthy fat in the nuts, and the raisins have a whole lot of fiber and other nutrients. They are a dry fruit, and they're dangerous for little kids for eating, but if they're in like a, a bread or something, they're not as dangerous because they are softer. So you're still getting the nutrients in your children. And it's kind of like a prize. You get a bit of extra sweet. Now, my pumpkin mixture is well mixed. I am going to use a spatula. Again, quick breads, you want to be very careful not to mix them too much. 
I think these breads are more forgiving than some of the other breads, simply because there's a whole lot more moisture in them. But again, you're not going to beat them. You're just going to more or less, it's called folding it in. If you don't make too much of a mess like I do. Oh, it smells so good and it looks pretty. Doesn't that look lovely? Now, you can either make this so it makes two small loaves, which I believe is how my mother used to make it, or you can make one big loaf. And so, let's see if I can get this in here. And these can also be made into muffins. But I want to do a variety of things for y'all. Oops. Yeah. I don't want to waste any of this good stuff. Again, I use my favorite spatula. Can't lose it. I am going to put this in the oven again for, um, it'll take about 50 minutes, something like that, and it will come out wonderfully. If you make it in muffins, they don't take as long because they're a lot smaller. If you make them in the smaller loaves, it will take less time as well. Okay, I'm gonna let, take a break right now and I think some things smell like they're ready to come out, so we're gonna do some switching. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. And Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Welcome back. I took the zucchini muffins out. They were what were smelling so good. Um, and you see, they've kind of rounded nicely. I wasn't very even with the amount of, of uh, batter I put in them, so they're a little bit more or less. Um, that kind of fits serving sizes. So I'm gonna put these over here, let them cool, and we'll taste them in a bit. Now we're going to make a treat. This is baked oatmeal. Now, you don't wanna make this every day, simply because it's fairly um, high in calories, but it's a special meal that you can make when you have company or on a weekend, you can make it and put it in the refrigerator overnight. You're going to use oatmeal, which is a wick food, milk, egg, those three are the wick foods, and then you put a kind of fruit on it. Peaches is pretty much what we put on it always, and you can buy the canned peaches with no added sugar, just in water. That it just, it's a fun breakfast that you're not gonna make every day. I need to melt a quarter cup of butter or margarine. Now, I'm a big believer in using butter. You hear, oops. You hear too much about the types of fat in, um, margarine now. There's more information out in there. They have a lot of the trans fat, even if they say they don't have trans fat, if it has less than half of a gram, it, they don't have to list it. So I don't know. I'm not a fan. I'm going to put the two eggs. I'm going to beat them up because they're supposed to be beaten. I'm going to add one and a half or one and a quarter cups of milk. Let me see how my butter's doing. Ooh! <laughs> it's very, very melted. I put it in the bowl that had some of the pumpkin in it, but I think that's gonna be okay. 
okay. Add a few extra nutrients in there. You know, mix this up. You are going to add a cup of brown sugar. Mix that up really well. And again, this is a food that can sit overnight. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, I always mix my leavening, be it baking soda or baking powder, into whatever grain I use, and that is so it is dispersed. Otherwise, you can get clumps if you put it in the liquid. I am adding three cups of oatmeal and two teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm going to stir it up. Now, if you use old-fashioned oats, you may find that you need to add a little bit more moisture. I've got a 9 by 13 pan prepared. And again, this is something, if you've got company or you have something special, it travels well. And it's, it's easy. Now, my mother got this recipe somewhere, and it's, a, it's an Amish recipe. And it had more fat and sugar in it. But I cut that down just a tad because none of us are Amish. I remember there was a, a study done, and they gave pedometers to some of the Amish farmers. And one of the farmers walked 27 miles in a day. And uh, he made the comment that they weren't no easy 27 miles. So unless we're walking 27 miles a day, we probably don't need to eat a whole lot of Amish food, as many calories and such. I'm going to put this in the oven. It is going to bake for about half an hour. Uh, again, it can sit overnight. And the um, it's just really yummy. It's a treat. OK, I'll be back in 10 minutes. OK, Max? I'll be back. How long does it take for your pet to die from heat stroke? The temperature in your car can be 120 degrees in just 10 minutes. What an avoidable, senseless tragedy. No one whose pet has died thought it would ever happen to them. Do you really want to take a chance with your pet's life? A reminder from the Animal Coalition of Buncombe County. Our muffins, zucchini muffins, are done, and so are the cereal bars. The cereal bars, you want to let them cool just a bit before you cut them. You don't want to cut them when they're cold, cold, because then they're a bit difficult to get out of the pan. Now, the muffins, you just take them out like this. And you can put them in a fancy bowl like I have. Or you can put them in a plastic bag. After they have cooled, you can freeze these so that you have your breakfast on the go ready. And I know, we're all busy. You can make some of these muffins and breads, and then you can have them ready for when you are going out. Now here, are the cereal bars. I made these, excuse me, last night. And so they're cooler. They're pretty yummy. I'll take a little piece. They're sweet. You may want to, if you find that they're a little sweet for you, cut down a little bit on the sugar. These are the pumpkin bread. And I will be honest, I forgot to put the sugar in them. So I sprinkled it on top, which is an alternative. You don't have a, quite as much sugar, and I'll open one up to show you what it looks like. It is, you know, really good. It's got the nuts, the raisins, a little bit of sugar, the pumpkin that is good. If you spray your um, muffin papers, they come out more easily. If you don't spray them, they can sometimes be a challenge. And then here is zucchini in a loaf. Oops. 
and you cut it. And it's got just a little bit of green. It's kind of a fun color. It's got the raisins, it's got the nuts. These are all made with whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour is going to be higher in some of the nutrients. And they're the little bits of nutrients that we need. They are not like the vitamin A, things like that, that we need a lot of. You can cut this up. And any of these are easy to take with a glass of milk. Now, the baked oatmeal is going to come out, and we're going to show you how to have a fancy, healthy, good breakfast. No family should go without medication or care because they can't afford it. With Buncombe County's free prescription card, Coast to Coast Rx, you can save up to 75% of the cost of your prescriptions. You can also access discounts on dental and vision care, diabetes supplies, lab work, and more. I'm County Commission Chairman David Gant, and I encourage you to get your free prescription card at buncombecounty.org slash rxcard and start saving today. Now I made just a little bowl of baked oatmeal for our first and I wanted to show you what it looks like after it has sat for a good period of time. I made this this morning and we put it in the oven probably about 1.30, 2 o'clock-ish. Um, so it's, it sat for a good four or five hours. And what you do with this is you just take a wee bit and it's kind of a, a custardy texture. And then you put whatever fruit you want to on top. You could add some more milk. Again, the oatmeal, the eggs, and the milk, and the peaches in this are all wick foods. And I'm going to taste it. I'm going to have my milk around here because it's hot. But this is something, again, you can make for a treat. And it's, you know, it's fun. Mmm. It's also really, really good. Enjoy breakfast. Enjoy some alternative breakfasts. You don't have to cook a whole lot. These are easy and they're transportable. You know, a plastic bag and then your glass of milk. Thank you much. If you want any more information about these recipes, please go to the Buncombe County website under Cooking for Your Health Recipes. Thank you.